Okay, hey everyone. Um, so we are going to jump into our next section of notes. This is jumping into specific types of plants. Um, so we are going to start with the most basic plants, the ones that have no frills, no fancy anything. Um, so we're going to start with non-vascular plants. I know we briefly talked about what vascular meant, so we're going to talk about that more today. So these plants lack vascular tissue. So they do not have vascular tissue in order to transport materials. Remember in the last PowerPoint, we talked about how the roots need to move the water up into the stems and into the leaves, and then the sugar from the leaves needs to move down into the roots. So this vascular tissue is important, but some plants don't have it. So these plants need to be very low growing. They cannot be tall. If they were tall, they wouldn't be able to move that stuff around because they don't have the tubes. So they stay nice and low to the ground um, because of that they don't need this tubing that we're talking about. They have very thin cell walls. So remember way back we talked about the cell wall and how it helps keep plants upright and um, helps them stand tall. Well, because these guys aren't tall, they don't need to have a really thick cell wall. And they do not have roots in order to absorb water. So you can see in this picture here, a good example of this, and the only example that we need you to know is moss. Okay, you might have moss in your yard. Um, it might be growing near a shed or on a tree trunk. Um, you might have heard the thing that moss only grows on the north side of a tree. Um, I don't know how true that is or anything, but this moss, if you walked up to it and tried to peel it off, it would peel off extremely easily because it does not have a root. There's no root to hold it in the ground. It would just peel right off of that tree. Okay, they do obtain nutrients and water from their surroundings. So only nutrients is just going to move from cell to cell. It's just going to kind of pass right on down the line. So this process, though, is very slow. So plants can't grow tall. I keep reiterating this. The non-vascular plants are very short because they don't have vascular tissue. Non, think of a non-smoking section. That means no smoking, okay? So non-vascular means no vascular. So they don't have those tubes. This tree here that goes very, very tall, it does have tubes, but all this moss on the side of the tree here, it's non-vascular. So it can only go so high up, and you see it actually stops on right, like halfway up the trunk, okay? It can't even grow up a tree that really tall. So that's the key thing for a non-vascular plant. It's nice and short. And you might see moss in the cracks of sidewalk or shady spots. I kind of said look around your shed. Um, there might be some there. We saw this word once before. I know we haven't talked about it too much yet, but they are considered a pioneer species. What that means is if a catastrophe happens, like a fire, uh, the first plants that are going to come back to that area are going to be pioneer species. And moss is going to be one of them. So because it's low growing, it's very quick to grow. So if there's nothing around, there's nothing else, everything has been burned down, moss is going to come back first. And then you're going to get grass. And then you're going to get bushes and shrubs. And then eventually you're going to get big trees. But that's going to take a while. And the other one we're going to talk about today is vascular seedless. So before we even jump in any further, vascular means it has that tissue. It's going to have the, the tubes that are going to move the water. And then seedless, that means it does not have seeds. So those two words are pretty easy to understand. So the one organism we need you to know here are ferns. Ferns share two things. They have vascular tissue. Ding, 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 right here. Can you guess the next one? Oh, they don't produce seeds, right here, seedless. So vascular, seedless. Okay, so those two things are super duper easy. So you can see here in this picture, the veins of a leaf are the tubes. So as a kid, when I would pull down a leaf, I would always rip apart it right at the vein. So every time I did that, I was ripping those veins, those vascular tissues right out. So these are those tubes. You won't find that on moss. They do release spores instead. So we talked about spores when we talked about fungi and how the wind can carry those. Same thing here. You can see spores, a whole bunch of pockets of spores on this picture. When a gust of wind comes on through, those spores are going to be carried along with it. 
Okay, so same thing as the fungi. The spores are going to be blown away by the wind. So vascular plants are plants with vascular tissue. That makes perfect sense. These plants can grow a little bit taller because they have that vascular tissue to move stuff. So you can see here this fern, and you might see ferns in your house. You might have a, a fern out back. Um, some restaurants always have ferns because they're really pretty and super easy to take care of. Okay, they grow about a foot, foot and a half, maybe two feet tall. Okay, they don't really grow that tall. Um, so they, can, they have that tissue to transport stuff, but they don't have a whole lot of it. So they can't really grow as tall as a tree. But you can see this dark stem that comes up here. That's full of vascular tissue, full of straws, and it's going to allow the water to move up, and it's going to allow the sugar to move down. So that's really easy. So this vascular tissue kind of acts as a strengthener as well. So remember that picture way back, um, there was that picture of the straws and the chopsticks. Chopsticks are super strong. They're hard to break, but when you put a couple straws in there, and makes it even stronger. And in real life, the straws are actually more strong than real straws. Okay, so um, don't let that deceive you just because you're like the hawk and you can bend a straw in half. Um, so normally in nature, the straws as vascular tissues are going to help hold the plant upright. So the cells, here's, here's that point I was just talking about. The cells that make up vascular tissue have very strong cell walls. There's a reason for this. Okay, they need to have strong cell walls so that your the tubes inside of them don't collapse. So I need you to do what I'm doing right now. So touch your neck and kind of rub up and down, just like right where your Adam's apple is. You can feel some rings, okay? If you kind of rub down a little bit, you can feel rings, hard rings. Those are actually cartilage, okay? Now feel your ear. You feel how your ear is soft, but it also kind of hard at the same time. So the reason you have this hard stuff, this cartilage in your throat, is because in order to breathe, your windpipe has to stay open at all times. So it reinforces your windpipe with cartilage. Same thing here. They have to keep the tubes open, the water tubes and the sugar tubes. So they're going to have really strong cell walls so that they can stay open at all times. Okay, so I think that's a pretty cool comparison. So again, imagine a bunch of straws together with a rubber band. Here's that same picture. More straws, more chopsticks, more support. Okay, so here, let's pretend. Maybe these five in here are the sugar tubes because they're in the middle. And these guys out here, they're the water tubes. Okay, so the water goes up, the sugar comes down, the whole plant is happy. So there are two types of vascular tissue, and I think they got some pretty funny names. Phloem. Phloem moves food, and I think that's easy to remember because the pH gets pronounced like an F. So phloem moves food from the leaves to the roots. That makes sense because when we learned about photosynthesis, we remember that that happened in the leaves. Okay, so the phloem flows down and it carries food. The opposite of that is called xylem. Xylem moves water up. It goes from the roots up into the rest of the plant. I keep talking about my plant water in period two. They water the soil. They don't go over and spray the leaves. So when they dump it in the soil, the roots immediately suck that water up. It puts it into the xylem. And then the xylem carries that water up into the flowers and the root or in the stems and the leaves. So phloem flows down, xylem flows up. Okay, so plants in general have stems, roots, and leaves. The stems are um, for ferns, the stems are underground. So that's what's kind of different here. Is the only thing in a fern that's above ground is just the leaf. Everything else. Is underground I'm hidden. Yes, I think that's pretty cool. I, I have ferns out back of my yard a little bit, and I like to go out and try and pluck them out of the ground. It's actually pretty hard, pretty hard to get these out. If you've ever tried, um, it's pretty hard to get a fern out of the ground. Um, I'm gonna link this video if you want to watch it. It's pretty cool. It shows how they unravel. Um, I think it's it's a pretty cool video to watch. Um, so you need to go back to Google Classroom or look at the front board and figure out what you need to do next. 
Um, happy Friday.